In this video, I'm going to show how you can create an online quiz for your students to take via an email or something you embed into a website. And you can do that entirely within Google. So I'll show you how to create the quiz, and then I'll also show how the quiz can have the student responses emailed directly to a spreadsheet that gets stored in your Google Drive. Now to do this, you'll need to have a Google account, so you can start by just going to Google. If you don't already have a Google Gmail account, uh, create one. It's a free account. And once you get to this point, you'll have up at the top of the um, Google page, once you sign in, you'll have a bunch of different options here. You'll want to click on Google Drive. Now you may have heard before of the term Google Docs, which is what this was called when it first came out from Google. They've recently changed the name to Google Drive. So this is considered your Google, Google Drive where you store all of these online documents. Okay, once you click on the drive, you'll see that uh, in this particular drive, I have a quiz folder that I created. I'm going to show you how to create your own folder uh, that you could store information in from individual classes or however you wish to do that. You just come up here to the button that says uh, folder with a plus on it click that and you'll get the box to enter the name of the folder. I'll just call this one demo quiz. And you can see I created that folder. We'll go ahead and click on the folder. Now we're inside of that folder here in our Google Drive. You can see it says my drive in the demo folder. Now we want to come over to the create button here and hit the red button you can see that we can create a folder, a document, a presentation. We have a bunch of different options. To create the quiz, we're actually creating an online form. So we want to come down here to form. Okay, and another thing to point out, we're also going to use a spreadsheet here in a little bit. And you want to make sure that you're clicking on the right option. They look like similar icons, both being green. But just remember the form icon has the little dots with the lines and the spreadsheet has more what looks like cells. So we're going to start by clicking on a form, and you're greeted here with the template chooser, and you can pick any one of the templates that they have built in with the Google Forms. We'll go ahead and just uh, stick with the default form here, and we'll click OK. Now we get our actual form page brought up, and you can see that we can uh, name the form easily here. So we'll go ahead and change the name. Okay, we can change that. Now one, one interesting point, that doesn't actually change the title. So you'll also want to come up here and click on Untitled Form and you get this box and that's where we can actually name it. And we'll hit OK. Okay, now form description. This is where you could put any additional information about the form, maybe which class it's for. Okay, something like that. And then right under that we have our quiz box to start entering questions, or our form entry box. Now a couple things about this. It always comes up with this multiple choice option as the default. I can grab the box and I can move it around by just grabbing and holding. And we'll talk about use that later to move questions around if you want them in different in a, in a different order. Over here on the right, we have an edit button, which is what we're in right now. We have a duplicate button, so we can click on this quiz this question once we get it finished, and we could duplicate it to save us work on building additional questions. And then here we would delete each individual question if we would make a mistake. So we'll start here with just a demo question. If you had information that would help the students with the question that you needed them to have, you could put that under help text. And for this, we'll just leave it as multiple choice. And we can click on the first option and we can just start entering our choices. You can hit return to go to the next choice or you can just use your mouse and click the next box.
Okay, and when you're finished, you want to scroll down a little bit here and click on required question to make sure that the question is required. And then we can go ahead and click done. Now, this is a new option, and I'm, I'm not going to cover it in this video, but you can actually set up your quizzes to where if they answer a certain way on the question, you can guide them to a different page or a different quiz. So um, I'll cover that in another video. For what we're doing here, we're just going to leave it unchecked, and we'll hit done. And so that's our first question. Now, one thing that I like to add that we didn't hear in the beginning is an, a way for the student to put in their name and their email address. So that's just an individual question. So all we would do here is go to Add Item and click. Okay, and that's going to bring up that default uh, text type question. So you can hear it says question type text box, which that's fine. I'm going to delete so I can show you. If you click the arrow next to Add Item, you actually see your choices of all the, the things you can do. You can enter all the different question types. You can put a header or a page break as well. So we're going to select text. And we'll do individual like this. We can do last name and require that and hit done. And then we can create a new text box and do first name. And again, require it and hit done. And now you could enter everything in one box if that's how you'd like to have it too. Not a problem. Okay, so we have email address and we'll require that one as well and hit done. Now, obviously, I don't want this question to come before this information. So this is where I will just grab that question, hold down on my mouse, and I can drag it down and put it underneath email address. And when I let go, it puts it in. It, you can see the little blue line here that shows you where you're at as you move around. Okay, so we have last name, first name, email address, and we have our first question. And oh, another thing too that's, that's helpful if I click edit here is to put a number uh, on the question. So I want, may want to come here and I'll put question number one. And then I can do like that. Now, if you're doing a survey or something to that effect, you might not want to do that. Um, but with a test, it's a good idea to number. Okay, so you have your question set like that. Now, we could go to another type of question. Another one that I like to use is the paragraph text. And this would be for a short answer type question. Okay, and then from there we can see it's set to paragraph type or paragraph text. We hit required and we hit done. And now we have a text box that they can just click in and they can enter their information. Okay, so you could go on and complete your entire quiz. And then when you're finished, you'll come to the bottom to the confirmation. And this is just a generic confirmation. Your response has been recorded, but we could click over that and say, Thank you for your submission. Okay, you can put whatever you want in the confirmation box. Now you have a few choices at the bottom. You have show link to submit another response. Normally you won't want to do that. There's no reason for them to have to submit more than one. Publish and show a link to the results of the form. I would leave that unchecked, obviously, in a quiz situation. Now, if it was a survey, a lot of times, uh, or not a lot of times, but sometimes I will keep that checked. And what they actually see is a graph then that will show what the other people had answered to the questions if people are interested in seeing how their answers compared to other people. And then also allow responders to edit responses after submitting. Normally, I would leave that unchecked if a student has a problem um, then they're going to contact you directly. Now when we're finished, we hit send form. Actually, yeah, let's hit send form. And you can see here, this is a link that you can share. So you would want to just click that link and copy it. Now if you want to embed this form into another place, like into a class website or into uh, a Edmodo site or something like that, or maybe just a web page that you have, you could click the embed code 
and it just changes the code. It puts a frame around it, and you can go ahead and select that. You can change the width and height of the, of the embed code. So if you're going to do that, change the width and height first, and then click here. Normally, I just let it do the default, and it works out pretty well. And you would just right-click and copy this code. Okay, so again, I'll send form. We'll do the embed code. We'll select, and we'll copy. And then I'll go ahead and close that. And now I have that saved to my clipboard for using uh, wherever I want to put the form. Now another thing I like to do, well first we're going to go to choose response destination. And this is telling Google where to put the information when someone submits a form. So we'll click that. Now you get automatically the name of your quiz plus the words responses in, in uh, parentheses. And I normally just leave it at that because I'll have a demo quiz form and then I'll have a demo quiz responses spreadsheet. And those will be right next to either, each other. When they're named similarly, it makes it easier. Now, if you already have a spreadsheet going for, say, for one period of your class, and this is just another test that they're taking, and you do want these results to go in with the previous test, then you can do that here. You would say uh, new sheet in an existing spreadsheet. So then you would just choose which existing spreadsheet when you click here. Um, where you want that to add these additional responses to. So you could do that as well. For this case, we're going to just keep it on new spreadsheet. And then down here you can set as a default. So you can say always create a new spreadsheet if you'd like to do that. Okay, so we're finished there. We'll hit create. And now the last thing I like to do is go to my live form and actually create a submission myself to make sure that everything's working okay. So I'll just put that information now. So once I complete the quiz, I just click submit and it says, thank you for the submission. You'll receive your grades, your grade via email soon. So I know the form's working. Now all I have to do is go back to my Google Drive. So I'm back here and you can see it did create demo quiz, which is our quiz form and demo quiz responses. So if I click on the responses, I should automatically see my entry and there it is with my answers. So uh, very easy. Anytime anyone submits a form, it just keeps the list going all the way down your form. I normally will just log into my Google Drive and check my spreadsheet to see what's going on with the submissions. But if you would like to get an email with each one of the form submissions, you can do that. You come to this page in your Google Drive where the responses go, and you'll go to Tools, and then you'll go down to Notification Rules. Now within the notification rules, there's it says notify me at this email address when, and there's all kinds of options here. The one we would do for uh, getting submissions would be a user submits a form, and we check that. And it asks, do you want to be notified by Daily Digest or right away? So if I click right away, then every time a form is submitted, I immediately get an email. Or I can click Daily Digest, where once a day, I will get one email that lists everyone who submitted a form. So again, depending on what you're using the form for, is uh, how you'll set up that box. I'm going to just cancel that. And again, everything will be entered directly into this spreadsheet uh, as soon as the form is submitted. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video on how to create online quizzes in Google Drive. And don't forget to check out my website, flippedfiretraining.com, where I have other tutorials and videos on how to bring technology into your flip training classroom. You can also catch me on Twitter at Flipped Fire.